I don't think I would be doing jujitsu if it wasn't for the anime Dragon Ball Z. He was back on his feet and back in the match, and he's acting as if he didn't even... That show taught me that you can take your anger and convert it into a fuel to do something constructive. After that show, I wanted to be a martial artist so, so bad. My name is Arun Kumar Sharma. I'm 25. I'm actually the first of my family to be born here. My family emigrated from India in the 80s. My mom worked at McDonald's, my dad worked at a gas station, and uh, my grandfather was doing security. My grandmother kind of stayed, raised us, raised me mostly for sure. It took me a long time to really appreciate what they did, how much they sacrificed, just so that I can have a better life. I was always a hyperactive kid, for better or for worse. So I did a few things all within a six month span. Taekwondo, I tried Judo, I tried Nippon Kenpo, and I tried Jiu Jitsu. Jiu Jitsu was the thing that stuck out. Echo Park Lake, my dad used to take me here when I was a kid, like 15 years ago. I never thought I'd come back here and live around here, and now it's like... I would love to expose people to Jiu Jitsu in the neighborhood. It's just old LA. I mean, you have uh, old Victorian homes. Oh, as you go closer towards uh, Temple, and Carroll Avenue is actually famous for that. And then at the same time, there's a whole lot of new stuff popping up. And so it's kind of like a clash between old culture and new culture. You have businesses and stuff that have been here for 60 years at least. And then right next door, there's a new coffee shop that just opened up. Echo Park Boxing and Muay Thai, it's really well received in this area because there's not really anything like it. That's just an opportunity for me to demonstrate the, the worth of jiu-jitsu and spread jiu-jitsu, you know, be an ambassador, so. Before we begin, I think the idea of self-defense is misleading. Oftentimes people come to these kinds of workshops and leave with a false sense of security. I will give you no such thing here. Instead, we will look at several realities and what you can do to arm yourself with some weaponry that has proven itself effective within those realities. Regardless of what you think you know, it is all useless if you are unable to apply it when it matters. The biggest skill you can develop in combat is the ability to remain focused under pressure, to move deliberately in chaos. This comes from repetition and repeated exposure to those conditions. So it is essential to make time to practice and perfect your movements, reactions, awareness, and above all else, mental toughness. Very good, very good, very good. I'm gonna push your shoulders from the front, okay? Yeah, but it's okay, it's okay. Get low, get low, get low. Turn your torso a little bit so that you're driving this into me more. Yeah, yeah, you see that? Now you became really heavy. This is her lock, okay? That's the exit right there, away from her palm. So. I can reduce the surface area by turning, really soak up the details and, and how it works. Th this width versus this width, it's, this is a greater surface area. So this is going to be harder for me to break through a, a lock than if I narrow that surface area. Does that make sense? Same reason why we rotate our torso is the same reason why we rotate our wrist. Try that. So I'm here, I'm pulling. You see that? Yeah. A whole lot better because you're, you're, you're staying close to your own center. I always have to remind myself why I started because it's easy to get sucked into competition, it's easy to get sucked into like hard training and people chasing after belts or chasing after glory and for me it's not about any of that. Jiba Santana of Lotus Club said this once uh, at a belt promotion, I don't care how good you are on the mat, it doesn't matter, it's how you are off the mat. And that spoke directly to me because for me it was never about fighting or combat, for me it was about being a martial artist, for me it was about how can I be a better person, spiritually, socially, emotionally, all of that. Uh, before I knew Jiu Jitsu, I didn't have that confidence. I didn't have that physical ability to back up the belief that, that I deserve to set boundaries. Um, and, and then once I got that, just the belief, even though I was very limited in my skill set, um, everything changed. So we're here, and he wants to kiss me, yeah. right? Yeah. And if I don't know distance management and I don't want to be kissed, I'm uncomfortable this now. Happens a lot. This happens all the time, and I see women do this, and I see women do that. Yeah. What's great about jujitsu is you never have to make a scene. As soon as he goes to kiss me, yeah. I'm here. 
If he breaks through this, what do I have? My friend here. Oh, that's good. Oh my God. If a guy is trying to kiss you and it's not consensual, you can't be like, oh, well, it's just a guy being a No, that's not just a guy behavior. That's not normal. That is never acceptable. So don't feel nervous to let somebody know this is my personal space, okay? Because people will treat you how you allow them to treat you. I've known Brie for a few years. We've trained together. Uh, we beat each other up. She's a great fighter, great martial artist. For now, I want to do everything I can in my power to be able to provide something for a community. It takes nothing out of me. It's really nice to be able to give back. At least that's part of my thinking process. No matter what I've been through, Jiu-Jitsu's always been there for me. And I'm not even a black belt yet. I'm just a purple belt. And at the same time, this beaten up, worn out, faded piece of material is one of the most valuable possessions I have.